Good evening, I'm Zara Gennard. Welcome to my studio. Who's ready to not see blood and bits of fingers and other things flying about from sharp blades? Because <laughs> if that's what you're here to do, I'm sorry, but I'm about to disappoint you. But there's always that chance. Live dangerously. Yes, well, maybe. Not where it comes to sharp chisels, I don't. So. I mentioned a cup of tea is important in the tweet. It is. Mine's here. A bit like never, uh, well, always remembering where your towel is. It's always important as well. Nailing. This is fixed to my wood vice. Don't like this wood vice, but I'm stuck with it. Uh, so. And I don't have a bench hook, which would be the alternative, but I could not find enough bits of wood to make a bench hook. So we're using this. Unfortunately, it does make it a little bit difficult to um, to see because of the lighting, which is up there and behind me, and this casts a shadow because it's now off the desk. The reason why I don't like this. This particular carving vice. It's not a particularly good reason, but it is a reason. There are other reasons about this vice that I don't like it, but um, I can't afford to get another one. Can't afford to buy the wood to make a bench hook either, but that will come in time. So we are stuck with this. So I'm just trying to decide if that's in focus. Let me know if you think it's not, uh, because with these glasses I can't see over there. Actually, I suppose what I could do is look at this. Well, I could if it was actually broadcasting. Come on, show me my own picture and if I make this full screen for the moment. That doesn't look bad. So. So we carve. That's this is one of the reasons I don't like this vice. This vice it does that. Can't do anything about that either. Mm. Because of the way it fastens, it holds the wood. It actually causes it or allows it to rotate. One of the things that I ought to also do at this point is reduce the level of tea in that in that mug. There's also something else I should do, and that is to mark a level. Pencil. That isn't a pencil. And if you're wondering what isn't a pencil, apart from lots of things. That isn't a pencil, not even a propelling pencil, although it does look rather like one. This is actually an engraving tool. You put an engraving bit in the end of that there, that you might use in a rotary engraver for instance. You can then use it by hand, like a pen. Nice little tool in a way. You could in theory also plot the odd small drill in, but it basically has to be only one size. So. Now then, what I'm going to do whilst I think about this 
Let's come in here and draw a line. Like that. It's more or less straight. I know why it isn't, but there's not a lot to do about that. isn't level by the way if in case you ever happen to be wondering that is because you need that just a little bit more right there um, this is this was a big piece of wood I cut it in half I don't have a bandsaw so all I have is a rotary saw so what I had to do was cut down one side, which I didn't do very well, as you can see. But cut down one side, and cut down the other, and cut down the other, and cut down the other. That gave me about an inch and a half cut depth. The rest of it then I had to take a, a handsaw and saw down. Didn't do too bad. Of course, I got a big guideline at that point. Uh, but mm, they, um, I, was trying to, I was trying to use the saw too deep. I needed to have done it in about three passes. I was trying to do it in one. Didn't work very well. So I kept lifting uh, at an angle. So, but since I'd be carving onto that surface in the future, I think, possibly, I might do it. It doesn't really matter. Um, I also potentially can get out the uh, either the planer or the plane or a sander, a belt sander and flatten that down if I really need it to but that's a job for so the back of this looks like the opposite of that I'm not quite sure how to help you with that you can't I need I need a bandsaw if I was going to do it properly I don't have one but a bandsaw um, eh, you need a fairly large bandsaw actually to do that because the, the small ones of about a 90 centimetre <coughs> um, throughout depth and this is taller than that so but but I needed a I don't know how big it is 110 120 millimetre throughout depth Now then, whilst I'm carving, you'll notice I'm watching what I'm doing. <laughs> Which means, I'm not watching chat. So, if you do put a message in chat, bear with me, as I will look up occasionally, but I will also take great care as to when I do it. Yeah, um, I said, lack of accidents is part of the aim of the broadcast. I may need to lower the desk a bit. I am sorry if the camera wobbles. The camera is fastened to the desk on which I'm carving. Uh, if I try and fasten it to the other desk, it won't go up high enough for you to see what I'm carving. Uh, and it's on what is a reasonably flexible arm. It's a microphone boom. Uh, well, it's more like a, an angle poised lamp, but it's uh, meant for microphones and uh, it's not very sturdy from that perspective. As I keep mentioning, one of the aims of the channel uh, improvements would be to get a floor standing microphone boom. It can then stand and peer over my shoulder perhaps or something like that, but at least it's on the floor. This is a concrete floor 
um, so it won't uh, it won't wobble like this when I carve or do anything else on the table for that matter. Now this piece is spinning. I don't like that because it means that I can't. I have a slight lack of control when I'm carving. That and that's this. This is one of the reasons why I don't like this. This vice because it does spin like this. If I push there, it'll turn. No matter how tight it is, all that stops it is a couple of pins underneath. Um, but they're not in the right position most of the time for where you where you want to carve to lock it in. They just sort of they're just like end stops. So, of course, when I got this vase, I didn't vase vase. I didn't know that. Um, it was a. Uh, a less expensive vice uh, and uh, the reviews were reasonable but they, um, it doesn't suit me what I um, probably actually want is a sort of a vice that's essentially a ball with a stand coming out the top of it which will go into 360 degrees I can sit it um, on a board on the bench which can be bolted to the board the bench the board can then be clamped down to the desk and I can uh, uh, work over the desk and also work at uh, any angle and it won't spin now that split which is the wrong thing to do don't want wood splitting it's not so bad when you split just off the edge like this but not really something you want to happen. You should always have control cuts. Not getting them, but you should always have them if you can. Now part of the reason it's splitting is because that's cutting I was cutting with the grain, so which you don't really want to do for that very reason. You um Split the wood. Now I'm using a deepish gouge here, probably one of my deepest. I've got a wider gouge, but it won't actually help in this particular case uh, because I don't have a wide area that I want to gouge out. They're all relatively small. So this is about the most aggressive tool I've got here uh, without switching to rotary carvers. And then yes, I could turn this whole thing into sawdust in uh, a couple of minutes. Which also wouldn't be very helpful because I don't want it all sawdust. One of the things I'd love to try with the rotary carving is the uh, reciprocal handset. With the um, the set of tool, there's a set of tools made by Fordham. Within their sphere, they are a relatively well-known manufacturer. So for carving tools and jewelry type tools, they're well relatively well known. They uh, they make um, what's called hanging motors they're called hanging motors because you hang them up <laughs> and then you connect the, a flexible shaft to them and uh, there's a handpiece on the end with the, that carries the tools you can get various handpieces all different shapes and sizes really to do all sorts of different things some small and narrow for detail work big chunkier ones that are easier to hold these sorts of things but one of the things they also do is what's called a, reciprocal, a reciprocating handset. And it's still spinning, it punches in and out. And you can put a chisel with an adapter, and you can put these 
uh, particular chisels, fact scoop chisels, into the handpiece. And it drives it like tapping it with a tiny hammer, consists constantly. Which means that you basically don't need to push against it. You just hold it in place and let the reciprocating action push the chisel for you. So you just guide the chisel. Um, and I'd love to try that. It's kind of a crossover between um, hand chisel work and, um, and power carving. Only thing is, I think the handsets are something like 50. Yeah, I, can't, I cannot now remember if they're something like 50 UK pounds or 150 UK pounds. So often when you're carving, you start with a nice, lovely block of wood like the one I showed you earlier, and then throw most of it away. That's what it takes to relieve the image out of the wood. One reason why it's called relief carving. The other is it's a relief when the carving's done. Sorry, that's a bit of an old in type joke. I think uh, OBS must have a little bit of image stabilisation on it as well because the way that that image is reacting. It's because I'm also, I mean, I'm, it is moving a lot because I'm doing relatively uh, aggressive cuts here. that and uh, just the nature. I'm using a little bit of force, although I'm doing quite a lot of controlled force here. Um, the blade is bouncing out the end, it's moving a little bit uh, and it's the sudden release of the force which is causing the camera to bounce. Now I could carve with less force and that would cause less bouncing. It would also mean it doesn't progress as fast. Now I should really do some stop cuts around there, so I probably will. And when I come to do a stop cut, I can explain what one is. At this point, I don't really need one. I'm doing sort of just some rough edge carving. So I want to... Incidentally, that, this is a spoon gouge that I'm using. Or spoon, yeah, it is a spoon gouge. Uh, and you can see the curve I'm getting on it, which is what you would be digging into the bowl of a spoon, which is why it's called a spoon gouge. This is a shallow spoon gouge, and some of that curve is courtesy of the bevel, but... Uh, so with carving, you always remove the material you don't want. Leave behind the material that you do, and you can't stick it back on once you've taken it off. It's not strictly 100% true. Given that it's wood, you can glue wood, and pretty successfully. But when the wood's come off in sort of shavings like this, it gets really hard to put it back together again. relatively determined that my tea does not go cold tonight, but we shall see. So this is cut about halfway down to where I want it to be. Which means I've got a long way to go yet. So I've kind of drawn the image on the top. It's in red. You might find it a little bit difficult to see. Um, but uh, in some ways drawing on the top is, or a detailed, drawing a detailed image is kind of pointless because you carve most of it away before you even get to the detail. So you end up drawing it on there more than once. Um, you really only need the outlines. Most of the time, like I need the main outline here to, to hollow out the outside. 
and then once I've done that I need the next level of how and so on but um, so although it's, uh, it's, it's drawn in, in detail that's kind of uh, as I say almost a bit pointless to have done that a little bit of waste of time whether a professional carver would do the same thing I don't know I mean, it does help to do it because you can plan your levels as to which is you know, which is a level like this banner at the top here is the highest level virtually and everything else is below it that sort of thing I think we will take this background down quite a bit and give us more space to carve with um, I could leave it uh, with a thicker background. Uh, one of the things that might determine that is how soon I get bored of gouging out wood. And the key thing there is when I get bored, not you! Although having said, which I ought to let you know, I'm quite a patient person. Note to self, when, uh, when I get the 3D printer, completed. Don't leave it on the bench over there uh, working whilst I'm carving. <laughs> it probably will put all sorts of wavy lines in it. If you're carving properly um, you don't get chips of wood flying all over the place either by the way. So when you've seen, you maybe seen that in films, nah, they're not carving properly. You, uh, with uh, hand carving like this, chips don't fly. Even with mallet carving, it tends not to fly. Um, you will get them flying if you do uh, lathe work. So, uh, turning a bowl, for example, or spindle turning. Uh, because it's things spinning and you're jamming a chisel into the wood, the dust and bits go all over the place. Ideally not too many bits, most of it will be shavings, but um, so if you ever do lathe work, what you want is a bobber mask, a full face mask. Um, just uh, eye protection is not necessarily all that good because you can get up under and down the top. Uh, with uh, with the sawdust and stuff like that. So when you're t wood turning, you get covered in the stuff. So you wear an apron. Good idea. Sawdust gets everywhere. Now, I've never done any wood uh, turning. Which is true. I've never done any wood turning. I've done some metal turning, but not wood. Um, but I have done rotary carving, and that does gets everywhere as well. That's kind of like the reverse. <laughs> reverse. Instead of the wood turning, and you're jamming a chisel into it, the wood's still, and you jam a turning wood bit into it. Similar effect in the end. This chisel is starting to feel a little bit dull. By which I mean, it still feels sharper than a razor blade, but it's not quite cutting as cleanly as it was when I started. What that means is we're going to sharpen it up in a minute. If I watch it, can do sharpen it up now. So, slightly misnamed because 
Whilst it will be sharper once I've done this procedure, I'm not sharpening it. I'm going to do something called honing. Also called stri uh, stropping, but um, there is a slight difference between honing and stripping. Well, honing actually has potentially has two meanings. You can hone with a stone, <laughs> uh, or you can hone with a polished strop. So sharpening involves the use of perhaps wet stones, grinding stones, diamond bits, these sorts of things. Um, stropping involves the use of leather. Honing or, or um, polishing perhaps, uh, in another term, uses leather with a mild abrasive, very mild abrasive. This stuff is feels like chalk. I spread some onto the leather. So effectively I'm packing the leather surface with a mild abrasive. What I then do is take this tool and I have to sharpen the bevel. So it means holding it at the angle of the bevel, which is about there. And whilst I draw this back, I have to rotate this tool through about 180 degrees smoothly and I do it smoothly because otherwise you will um, over time you would wear one part of the edge differently to another part of the edge So it takes a little bit of practice to do this with you get with large U gouges like this or deep U's. Then what you do is because that process actually causes the edge to do that and, and create a slight upward edge, which of course that's that's relatively blunt. It's not got a sharp edge. Turn this over, and on here there's a piece of wood, which the right shape. I just drag this backwards twice. Quite literally what that does is takes that and does that with it, straightens out the edge. Now this is a lot sharper than when I started. And it is. And I can physically feel the difference. I'm actually using less effort. It is one of the uh, differences you immediately notice. You know, the sound of the wood also is slightly different. And it of course cuts through the wood easier. Now while you're carving, uh, hand carving, I don't know particularly about mallet carving, but I understand it's somewhat similar. Uh, and I probably would sharpen the tool about every 15 minutes or even less. So you you would effectively strop it, smooth it, polish it, however you want to describe it, what I've just done, about every 15 minutes whilst you're using the tool. Now what I might do with this background here is not smooth it. Because that is one thing I could do is smooth this down to perfect flat. Or as close to perfect flat as I can achieve. But I may not for this particular carving. Um, and that is just something that came to me now but it's kind of little bit dilapidated um, in the background here where the feral gibber is uh, so perhaps a little worn so maybe it would be an idea to leave this background a little worn by the way doing that and I exaggerated on purpose is bad carving. If you're moving it that far, you're not carving right. It shouldn't move, 
much much more than uh, an inch if, if that when you're doing it. If you were using a, a mallet carving you probably wouldn't even expect it to, uh, to move outside of the wood at all. Okay. So it's, it's, uh, carving is about control, not beating the heck out of a chisel with a mallet. Any chisel that goes flying off like that is out of control um, and the potential is that you, if you don't get hold of it enough it flies out your hand which is also out of control. Effectively it shouldn't bounce out of, you know, bounce out of the wood um, at all. Now you may see me twisting this tool as I make a cut. Um, what I'm doing there is essentially using it a little bit like a knife, circular knife though, so it's a bit of an unusual shape, but that just sometimes helps the cut a little bit. So at the end of this process, something like about 75% of this block will no longer be there. And it will all be in little um, hamster bedding <laughs> um, uh, in a bin somewhere. Oh, and a compost heap, by the way. If you, um, if you carve, you can put the wood into a compost heap. When you've carved it down into these little pieces like this, it does degrade quite easily. Now this stage of the carving is called rough carving, uh, also sometimes known as roughing out. I am literally just you know, shifting lots of wood roughly, um, creating roughly the shape that I'm after. Uh, and then we'll go on to more finer stages later. Now, when you're carving, wood grain is something you've got to keep your eye on. And also, the tilt of this is fooling me as to how thick it is. So I'm going to have to watch that as well. Now, I am tilting it slightly forward because that makes it a bit easier for the camera to see. Plus, it doesn't make it any easier for me to see. Tilt this way a bit and um, bring the camera there and there. So you've got the camera shadow but I'm stuck. One way or the other I'm kind of stuck. Now 
I'm actually also debating as to whether I actually want to put that gem there or not to bother. So if you have any opinions, feel free to let me know as to whether you think it should be carved with a gem. It's not a full card, uh, isn't this? Um, the bottom section of the card is missing. But most of the bottom section of the card is like a war cry. Other than showing off my lettering skills. Uh, or otherwise, it doesn't really add much. Because most of the thing is the gibber and the frame around it. And putting that in and that bit of writing seemed like a good idea. But it did at the time. But it continues to be so. We shall find out later. So will I. I don't know at this point. Anyway, 8 o'clock. Right. So, although I am shifting quite a bit of wood, it takes time as you can see. Now, you to be careful, this is where, in theory, stop cuts come into it. Uh, and stop cuts are named as such because they stop things from happening. Like movement and cutting and ripping. I am lucky in this particular bit, I suppose, in that I am cutting completely cross grain. The grain of the wood is important when you're carving. It's a major importance while you're carving. I, I'm lucky that this bit hard bit here is cross grain, but I don't really like cut, uh, making things with vertical grain, not relief carving. Uh, 3D carving, I suppose, might be better to in, in stuck grain that way. Now, it's been completely arbitrary that I actually laid the gibber on this way around. I could have done it the other way, so hmm, it's kind of my fault. I laid it out. I didn't actually think about the grain when I was doing it. I should have done. But I didn't. Not to know by now. by now everybody's getting more disappointed by the minute that they're not actually seeing any blood or yells of pain. Actually if you'd have watched the, not last night, the night before, unfortunately I couldn't broadcast last night. I got in too, too late and then make, um, make tea and it just, it takes a while to set up for garden. Um, so I just wasn't able to make it practical. You'd have had about 10 minutes of carving. Um, but yes, the night before last there was the odd bit of pain. Just because of the way I was carving here, I kept rubbing my, my fingers against the sharp edge of this piece of wood. And it is quite sharp. Still didn't cut myself. <laughs> but uh, as I mentioned then, I have never cut myself carving. Not even with the knives. Mind you, I do help myself by wearing a Teflon glove when I do that, because you hold a piece in your hand and you use a sharp knife like this. <laughs> or the blade's really close to your fingers. Now, the Teflon doesn't necessarily stop you cutting yourself, but it um, does a heck of a lot to, to uh, restrict that possibility. Yes, I have these blades how I have how I have cut myself on the blades not whilst I was carving whilst I was putting the blades away caught the corner of this one in particular it's got a really sharp corners Yeah. 
the unfortunate I cannot mount the camera anywhere else. I can't put it on the desk to the side of me because it's about a foot lower. And if I do that, then the camera won't reach up and you won't be able to see. Now then, this back edge here is approaching the sort of level I want to leave it at. If you ever wanted to know what 10 piece worth of uh, wood shavings look like, there you go. That's about 10 piece worth of wood shavings, based on the price of this block of wood. Of course, if you buy them from a pet shop, you get more. Um, at least I think you get more. But there again, they come from industrial um, processing, where they use very big saws and blades and things like that and they produce a prodigious amount of that stuff. That's a, the big professional ones sell it as biomass uh, which goes to um, heating plants and generating complexes and things like that. They burn the stuff. And uh, small pieces like this burn hotter than big, uh, big logs because you can get a lot more air in amongst it. Hmm. The other thing I don't like about these vase because it hangs off the edge of the desk. A lot of these chips are going on the floor. I do have a tarpaulin on the floor which I'm stood on. But it does mean I've got to clean that tarpaulin up before I, I finish and I can't just fold it up. I've got to take all the bits off and clean it down. I'm going to walk barefoot around the room because they're on. I'm wearing slippers, but the bits are all on the slippers because I'm stood on them. Otherwise, I get splinters in my socks, which is not very nice. Um, so I have to then uh, <laughs> clean my slippers as well. Things we do with these little streamers for you guys who watch. All this stuff goes on in the background, you know, behind the scenes, and you never know. Okay, now, what I'd love to be able to do with this vase, with this vase, vice, and I can't, is now tip that that way. I can't. I can spin it round and tip it that way, but then I have to work from the side here, which is not very comfortable. I have to work from this side here, which is not very easy because it's the off hand and I have to work left handed. The ball style vice I can actually turn in a 180 degree dome any way I like. It also locks in position, this one doesn't. If I lower that a bit, that pin will make contact with that bit there and it might not move. Yeah. Well, it moves. It doesn't move as much.
There's a bit of a discontinuity there for some reason. I need to switch the other gouge, the smaller one. Yeah, change of direction, possibly the green. Let's try this other smaller U-shaped gouge, but it's got a bigger spoon on it. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. There must be a difference in the wood at that point. Possibly would be a better idea to carve the opposite direction. But so now I have to do something like that. Put that down on the bench, it might stay. Actually, I don't think. I can't really see it. I was going to say. This, uh, the wood that I did yesterday is already darkened um, and the new wood is, is lighter, the new wood that I'm exposing. So the wood oxidises, you could say it rusts, it ages, it changes colour when in contact with the air. No, I don't like that position. Let's try tipping it up a bit. I may have to just carve this completely off the desk. Put that down there like that. Bring the camera back a little. These days, you know, I'm going to pick a piece that's easy to carve. <laughs> you know, this piece will have its own challenges because of the um, the small spaces, which I ought to have learnt by now. All the pieces that I've done so far, I've had sort of quite. Um, tight small spaces to carve which are really awkward spaces and you'd think by now I'd learn to sort of either make the spaces a bit bigger so I can get a chisel in or at least do something to mitigate it but nah do I do that no I don't It's very easy to sort of dig in and just leave a wood out. Don't leave a wood out. It splits. Uh, and a split is, is uncontrolled. You can do things you don't want. It can also blunt the edge of your blade. Which is also another good thing. Essentially, if you're having to leave it out, you're not carving properly. Um, you're either using the wrong tool or you're using it in the wrong way. Now I'm going to back to the limit of this tool here and uh, not even that uh, thinner gouge would, uh, well smaller gouge would help too much. What I'll have to do is start to carve this 
from the side and then ultimately probably go to a really flat gouge and uh, and sort of work vertically vertically horizontally although I am kind of thinking as to whether or not I actually want to uh, smooth that edge off. That does not want to cut properly very nicely. I won't say properly, that's not right, but... The wood is resisting. One thing um, when you're carving, if you feel the wood resisting, it's resisting for a reason. Always best if you can to work out what that reason is, um, because wood that resists is trying to tell you something. I know that's anthropomorphizing, but basically, it's trying to tell you something about the wood, and uh, you ought to be listening. It's kind of if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't borrow a, uh, a phrase from elsewhere. Right, I can't really go any more with that. I can try this. This isn't. This is a better. It's got a slightly better uh, spoon on it, but not by much. Yes, right on its limit. Got any questions about carving, pyrography, um, chain mail, magic dots, <laughs> airbrush painting, uh, light up rugs. What else? Chain, I said chain mail, jewelry making. Feel free to ask. They're all things which get done on this stream, or have got done on this stream. And uh, feel free to, uh, to ask. I'm carrying the wrong direction for that. I will split the wood. I know I will split the wood because I can see it splitting. So I need to turn this that way. I'm going to get a cup of tea. Mm. There we go. And now I can sort of try and work my way around here. And that spinning is going to be top spinning. Am I off camera? I'm off camera. This, by the way, um, here is a stream deck. Great piece of kit if you stream. I 
allows me to control OBS um, and Pretzel for that matter, she's doing the music uh, here, which is about, about four feet away from my keyboard. Um, Can you see that's Vice is turning. Right, for the moment what I'm going to do is carve the jewel in because I can always carve it out later. Can't put it back in if I change my mind. <laughs> So I always try and leave myself with the maximum number of options. You gouge can be quite versatile as well. I mean, I'm carving here using the side of it. Saves me getting the flat blade out. Basically, I'm being a little bit lazy. Now normally when you do rough, car rough out carving like this, one of the things you'd be doing is doing like vertical straight down cuts, getting the edges real, really sort of smooth. I'm not altogether sure I'll be doing that. I've got a feeling that this is, this would be more sort of slightly rustic carving. Um, rough, rough carved edges as opposed to perfectly smooth. I don't know, we'll see. Um, again, options. I can leave it rough carved or I can smooth carve it after the fact. So rough carving doesn't close off a smooth carved finish. Um, a smooth carved finished rules uh, closes off the, um, the rough carving option.
near thing. So do this and that bit there will be the, the final bit on this side. Because remember not to do that edge because I want a plinth for this to stand on. Now then this could do with being more vertical. No, I'm not going to get one at any time, but I could almost do with a pneumatic locking device. Put my foot on a button, you know, on a button to uh, to lock the device, put it on again to release it. Locks it solidly in position would be fantastic. You are always changing position lots of times when you're doing um, carving now then. I am now carving with the grain and the grain is virtually parallel to the surface of this wood. That way, virtually parallel all the way. That has danger when you're carving. So be really careful to make sure that you cut wood. You tend not to take deep cuts because it's very easy to split the wood. Very easy. Right. What I should do is some stop cuts there. So let me get the flat chisel out. Hi Wolfie, good evening, you've been busy. I see. You wanted to see me do something different like carving. Um, I think now, both nights when I broadcast it, you've, you've come in at half an hour before the end. <laughs> Which isn't a bowl, thank you for dropping in, it's just irony. <laughs> Mic muted. No, my mic's not muted. And I'm putting out sound. In fact, I shall even prove that by doing this. Plus, there we go. Yeah, that's right. Because I do check that now. Every time. Of course I don't... Oh, uh, okay. I will say I don't every time check my own broadcast to make sure the mic is going out, but OBS tells me it's going out. And I've just checked my own broadcast there and proved that it was. Um, yes, it's very easy to split wood when you're carving with the grain, so... What I've just done is a stop cut at the end here. The stop cut stops the wood from splitting. Or rather, it stops the split from going any further. You'll hear a crack like you might just hear. No, not now, but then a minute ago. That crack is um, splitting wood. Still muted? No, I'm still not muted. Thanks. Thanks for the host. Hopefully that's allowing you to hear me. Okay, I just switched to the flat chisel. I can uh, do this just as easy with the flat chisel. And see, I keep wanting to make a stop cut at the end. It, switch, it says switching blades every 10 seconds.
<laughs> it was your end. I uh, no, it was at your end. <laughs> no, it's not a convenience. I don't mind. It's always worth checking. I actually do find it kind of funny in a way that because you see it quite often, um, viewers. No, I'm not getting at you by any means. Um, but you quite often get viewers go. Um, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not broadcasting sound uh, or whatever, you know, and you, your mic's muted, and you've got. Uh, I see it on some of the bigger channels. They've got maybe two hundred people in chat, and one person saying, um, you know, the mic's muted and stuff like that, kind of without realizing the other two hundred people are not saying. That. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just, mm, not a man. But in this particular case, I mean, it's perfectly. I don't mind you mentioning it um, as, I, as, I was, as I was saying when you couldn't hear me uh, I do now before every broadcast check the fact that OBS is picking up the microphone and um, at least attempting to send it out uh, I don't always check my own broadcast for, uh, for sound but I can do as I'd usually do have it playing back if I need to monitor it yeah then you get this sort of stuff when you're carving. Um, sort of the wood tails. Uh, if you get them, don't pull them off. Here, it might not be a problem if I did. If they're on the top surface and I pull them off, I might pull that piece of wood all the way down to this end. And if I wanted that bit of wood, I've just lost it. You always cut tails off. Drive the chisel down across them. Uh, so if they don't fall off with their own accord, cut them off. Okay, I'm thinking here would be a great opportunity to have two handles because then I could have one with a square blade and one with a gouge. This is slightly e easier with a gouge. But I need the flat chisel uh, for the stop cuts on the end. Oh no, I don't know you. But no, you have done. <laughs> you have done in the past. I think you. I think you did it once or twice. You know, comes back to haunt you, but I wasn't expecting you to have done to be doing it then. And you know me anyway. When you say something like that, I take you seriously and prove um, prove that you're trolling. <laughs> if that's what you were doing. Talking of which, have you talked to that other streamer yet? Or have they just given up trying to uh, determine? Lizard Soul 87, good evening. Um, yeah. Actually, the, one of the easiest ways is we now that was close um that's about the nearest i've added to an accident carving um that's because i wasn't paying attention one of the uh, one of the simplest is if you i don't know if you're familiar with it is um a bench hook it's a piece of wood which is sort of like um I'd describe it as an S or a Z shape, but it's sort of right angle, horizontal and right angle. Uh, which literally you just press against the edge of the desk and the wood can then be pressed against the, the, the top of the hook. Uh, which holds it in place and you always carve towards the hook because that's where the, the pressure is going. So you turn the wood and always carve that way. Um, that's, that's the simplest way of doing it. I don't happen to have enough wood lying around to make one, otherwise I would have done. Um, but that's, that is the simplest way of holding a piece of wood uh, down while you're carving. F full, uh, certainly relief carving, full, uh, full carving. 
your best, about the only way with a full full carve is to use a vise of some kind. Um, just because you kind of need to have it. Uh, if you're full, doing a full full 3D carve, it becomes a point at which laying it down against a bench hook just isn't going to work. Uh, not even one with with a tall back on it. Uh, and then you probably start needing, well, you can then use sort of a standard desk vise, um, a, a carpenter's type of vise, uh, or something like a, uh, in the UK, they'd be called uh, workmates, uh, a similar sort of uh, workbench, but it's the top's a bit like a vise. They're, they're about the simplest way of doing it, but to be honest, if you're into sort of 3D carving and you like doing it, then it's worth buying a proper carving vise and what they do is um, a bit like this I'll show you this this one i don't care much of but what what happens is you would then you screw the screw the unit into the base of your 3d whatever um which supports it and then and then you you know then it, it's mounted in the vise uh, and lets you position it. I mean, I can spin this in all sorts of directions. I don't like this type of uh, this vice, but it's. Um, I didn't know I didn't like it when I got it. Um, but it's worth, you know, the, uh, when you're into 3D carving, you, you kind of need that sort of thing because you just want to spin it around so much. Uh, and fixed vices just uh, don't allow you to do that. Um, carving vice. What a bit? Oh, a bit. You mean the bench hook? Yeah. Um. So for something like this, look at carving vices. This one, it depends on your style of carving. Um, I got this one, and I don't don't particularly like it. Okay, um, it mounts it mount it just clamps to the desk, which is fine. I actually would prefer something that was further on the desk myself. Um, And the other thing about this is, is the only thing that stops it rotating like this in this direction is two pins here on the bottom, this one and this one, knocking against this post. So I can't have it up here for example because if I start to carve on that side it just turns around and there's, there's just not enough force on this shaft to stop it from turning um, and that is something I don't like because it sometimes you want an odd angle um, and if I just try it now just to sort of illustrate the point I'm going to tighten this up as much as I can there but I can move it and I can't turn that anymore now if I was if I'm doing really light carving, that might you know might be enough not to bother. But that's the one thing I don't like about this. There is a, 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 another type of vice which is has a ball with this rod, if you like, sticking out the top. Uh, it sits more on the desk, which is where I like to work more. Um, and um, when you clamp it shut it clamps the ball and because there's a lot more area clamping the ball you can't spin it so you can clamp it in any position you like uh, over a full sort of 180 degree dome uh, so i think they're definitely um, uh, useful but for, for relief carving you can manage with a bench hook and if you're doing any heavy duty work with a bench hook clamp it and the work so just a g clamp um, which is what I um, uh, sometimes use uh, just straight on the bench 
Uh, the other thing you can do if you're using a bench hook uh, is to get some non-slip matting. It's really cheap stuff. For some reason, it's almost always blue, um, but it, it it helps. It's a, it's a, it's it's not sticky, but it it sticks, um, and it just it just literally helps uh, with the friction, stops things uh, moving unexpectedly. Um, unfortunately, carving vices aren't cheap. That's the other problem with it. Oh, excuse me. It's also warm in here. Um, Uh, as to as to the screws, you kind of don't have much choice, really, um, with a vice. Uh, the the carpenter's vices, which sort of you know press stuff against the side, then obviously there's no screw holes, but you can only go so far. You've only got so many angles, and uh, a full body carve is is hard to do in car in a vice like that. You've you only got so much range of movement. Um, you end up having to do screws in the bottom. Uh, I can't actually show you this, but the the, the screws in here. Um, probably are only what about a quarter of an inch, which is about a centimetre deep. It doesn't need a lot. There's four screws as well. Uh, and they're in the back of the work, or if you were body carving, they'd be in the base, which of course most people don't look at. Um, but if you if you if you don't want them to be seen, there are a couple of ways around it. Uh, one is cover the bottom with something like green uh, green felt, for example, which is always good, stops it scratching things if you put it down. Once it's finished, of course. The other one is the um, you can get uh, wood filler. Uh, which you know it's like a, a putty type substance which you can squeeze into the holes um, the other one is to get just some PVA glue and some sawdust because you'll be sanding it no doubt uh, sawdust PVA mix them together and fill the holes um, if you've used the same wood it'll generally come out the same color they're not that big a, a hole um, that's there so it's it's kind of hidden from that perspective and, and it's kind of a necessary thing, uh, but you can you can hide them in that way. Yeah, they they are useful for lots of things. Uh, carving is one of them, especially if you um, if you've got a shiny table like this, um, which is I used to have one in my previous studio. Uh, put the mat down, put the work on top, and clamp it. You don't need as much force to clamp it down, which means it doesn't squash the wood. And also doesn't squash your desk. <laughs> right. What I'd love to do with this at the moment is turn it that way. Just, but I can't. That's that's the thing about this particular vice. So it only goes through certain angles. Because I kind of love to turn that just sort of more that way. So, what sort of things do you do you carve? Um, is it so, or is it just something that you're interested in, in looking at at the moment? See this spinning away from me. Right, we're about down to the right level there, so that's...
Um, I've seen horse shaving benches, but I have actually no idea how they hold the work. Um, but they they tend to be for rather large uh, pieces of work. Uh, spoons aren't easy to do. I've not tried one, um, and I don't actually have a really have a, a good um, chisel to do a uh, a spoon with. But they're not. Um, they're actually. Um, they're also quite a popular thing to uh, for people to have. Not a lot of people carve spoons. This model is on a desk. Oh, okay, I must come to. So it would be just like the the ears, isn't it? I think. Um... Yeah, I suppose. They would do a similar sort of job. I mean, it, it, I suppose in, it, that sort of. We may not be talking about the same thing here, but that would would have a similar sort of thing, um, because effectively it's stopping the work from moving. I was just thinking though that they tend to because it's a shit. They're, they're, they're meant uh, for using sort of like two-handed knives, where you, you're carving like that downwards. You're, you're sort of pushing down into the into the groove as opposed to sideways movement, so it might not be better for for some things. But I don't know; I've never used one. Uh, let me just um, you need to be permitted before you um, try that uh, lizard, otherwise you'll be turned out. Okay. Yeah. It is slightly different to what I was thinking about, but that is, I recognise that. Um, that's actually quite nice because the um, you've got the foot pedal to clamp it down, which is nice. Yeah, that might actually work. I don't. So he's using it with a draw knife, um, and, and and making spindles. I am thinking, yeah, I mean that that's that's adjustable. Is that as well? Uh, I'm thinking probably you might have to sort of groove the um, the work. The thing you might have to be a bit careful of that is if you were doing something. Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something uh, that I've got around. Oh, well, yeah. Let me just pick up an arbitrary. Let me do pick up this, for example. If you were doing something like this and you're trying to clamp it, if you clamp there, because this, this is a cone, it would tend to wobble about a bit. And of course, this bit here isn't supported at all. Um, so it might be a little bit more awkward to use. You know, the carving vise will be screwed into the bottom, so that kind of has better support. But yeah, no, it looks um, interesting. Of course, that's designed to go on the end of a woodwork bench because it will be it'll be peg mounted. But a relatively simple, uh, simple concept is that a couple of uh, just to, uh, a box, two pieces of wood, and and the dowels that um, clamp it down. Yeah, that's yeah, probably that's the sort of thing, and you you kind of have to work around the thing. I suppose you could you could always then you. I mean that the nice thing about that is it's a very fast release. As soon as he takes his foot off that uh, the, the the stirrup, the pressure's gone, and he can reposition the uh, the work uh, as as he wishes um, with with um, vices. It's a bit harder, but 
I'm, get, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing if you if you left a sufficiently square piece, because don't forget it's it, it's it's actually a similar sort of problem I have when I'm. Um, if you look at these pliers, it's the same it's the same sort of issue you get with pliers because if I found something round here, I don't actually can you see how it's pushing the piece out? Um, as I, as I squeeze it pushes it out and so what you what you only if I was to hold that and manage to hold it successfully um, then wood wood would would hold this easier because it's more rough and, and there's friction but I'm holding it at only two little tiny pieces I'm putting a lot of pressure on a if you go for a square edge I'm putting a lot of pressure on that square edge there whereas up here there's, there's no support at all and that will rock. Um, if if you go for something like a carpenter's vice um, they've got square the clothes like that square so when you um, I can't get this between there but if I take something like this um, you've got a better clamping surface and if you're clamping something that is in itself flat on two sides I've got a pencil here um, you've got a larger clamping surface so it might work for some things might not work for others it's like everything else the tool is designed to do a particular job it does that job really well if you try and use it for something similar but not quite the same it might be terrible yeah and there's all sorts of ways around it yes you, you can use foam you could use some sacrificial wood uh, maybe uh, I don't know, balsa wood or something similar really soft wood uh, that would also stop the um, the piece marking. Or uh, if you're going if you're going to leave a base on it, then what you might uh, to you know for carving purposes cut it off when you're finished. Then what you might do is uh, is shape it to match the the V, so that the the V actually gets a good clamping surface. Um, and what you could do is kind of make it cone shaped, which will make it easier to spin, for example. All sorts of ways around if you know if you if that's the way you're doing it. Just like it is, as I say, it's you choose the right tool for the job uh, if you've got that chance to do it. And if not, you make something up that works just as well. That's quite a neat um, device. Never, I've never seen what I've. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, as the sort of thing where people sit on them, uh, you know, sort of outside rather than on the end of a bench, and thinking about it because it, it's the same mechanism but it just looks different <laughs> when when you see somebody sat on one. Um, right, I'm just going to do a bit more carving, which means I need to move this. This is one of the other problems with this thing is I can't keep the camera in view. And I now have to carve left-handed, which is not my favourite. God, it's spinning again. I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, how can I do this? I'm going to have to do it sort of... So now, now, actually I can't tighten that, uh, let's lift that up enough to tighten it. So now I've got to carve a really awkward angle here, which you can't see anymore. Because uh, I've got to carve around the, um, around the camera, well yeah, even the desk is in the way to be honest. I've got to carve left handed. Uh, and I haven't got very good lighting and that wood is splitting
Yeah, no, I, um, it is an unusual tool. I, the, the ones I've seen, uh, was kind of like a saw, um, a saw horse. Uh, and they literally sat on it, uh, put the foot on a, on a mechanism like that, actually one on either side, so it was like stirrups of a horse, which is probably where the name came from, rather than the, the, the type there where they're actually um, sat facing it. But yeah. The Lally, hi! Welcome to the stream. So I'm going to have to carve this in a bit of an odd way just to get around the fact that my carving vice doesn't do what I want it to do. How are you today, Lolly? It's a long time since I did any... Well, I was about to say it's a long time since I did any carving. It kind of is and it isn't. I finished a piece off last year around about uh, it must have been about October time. I finished off Amber the Owl and uh, haven't done any since then. Now I'd prefer to carve it like this but left-handed carving is not something I'm very good at. Yeah, this is still um, feeling good, but but uh, yeah. Mm. Whilst I think most of the people that's currently in chat probably know, but whilst I'm carving, I may not see your message for a little bit. Uh, just because I will concentrate, these chisels are sharp. And uh, I actually, for the first time, came close to an accident earlier on tonight. Because I was not exactly concentrating, and I should have been. I can talk while I'm carving. I just can't reach out while I'm carving. So if anybody doesn't know, this is rough carving. It's the kind of the equivalent, carving equivalent of underpainting. If you're familiar with um, with art terms, it's the it's the bit where you just roughly make out the shapes that you want and get the sort of rough levels of wood that you want before you then go on and start doing uh, the serious shaping of things. So in looking at this piece, what I'm doing here is just taking this background layer, the outside if you like, down to the bay, what would be the backboard, um, and then I'll start to lower anything else around it down. So I've already started to plan some of the levels. So this, which is the banner, that's at the top, which you may or may not be able to see uh, because of the lighting and the fact it's red. Um, this is the highest level. Uh, and probably the frame then comes at the next level down because the banner's over the top and then probably the deepest parts are actually inside the frame here the background to the uh, or some of the background to the gibber and uh, quite where its mouth is going to be I'm not quite sure yet
Okay, well, say good evening. Thanks for dropping in. Hope um, hope everything goes well in the uh, the test tomorrow. Ah, that's great, Lolali. You know a lot about it then. <laughs> I do so many things. Yeah, the, the, in some ways they're kind of all related, but I just like creating things. And uh, uh, trying new things. I um, Well, it, it, it says below the stream window, I think. I, I sort of... I've got... A, a, um, I describe it as a short attention span, but that short attention span may be a couple of months. Um, but I do like to keep doing something different. Um, it does mean I don't get chance to practice things as much, you know, to get as good than if I did one thing all the time. But I do like to experience different things, find out what I like and what I don't like. As I say, it's, um, I also find it kind of amazing just how much different things um, have similarities like the uh, um, uh, pyrography has similarities to the scraper board for example um, and similarities to airbrush painting believe it or not and um, well hopefully you believe it because I said so uh, but uh, yeah it's um, uh, I, I was, as I learnt both of them, I was kind of surprised at just how a lot of the concepts are similar between them. Uh, and your own pyrography is black and white, as is um, the uh, scraper board. So again, there's uh, you know the similarities in the way in which you construct the image. I guess, Lily, um having watched your father carve, I'm sure you have, um, you'll, you've probably got an idea whether I'm doing this right or wrong. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. It keeps it interesting for me to keep doing different things as well. Um, but uh, carving's the, one of the hardest to keep... Um, a good camera view of. Um, I don't know whether uh, the, the variety is such is good for the uh, for the channel as uh, you know because it's always something different but um, it's something I will probably continue to do. Now I'm trying to carve onto this piece of wood which is totally wrong. I shouldn't be trying to do that. I'm kind of fighting with the vice a little bit. I don't want to carve left-handed, but I'm being almost forward forced to do so. I don't practice left-hand carving, so... And I'm carving with the grain, which, whether it's left or right handed, is always interesting. The lucky, the luckiest thing is um, the grain is parallel uh, to the wood surface here, so I don't get the cut diving. Um, and spoiling what I'm trying to do, which is uh, helpful.
talking over split level because there's the background, there's the sort of frame background and then there's this at the foreground so I've got to be just a bit careful in this area here because this frame background go goes behind this so I'm going to be careful not to cut too deep. Having said which, I'm carving it so if I cut too deep and that bit goes missing I'll just rearrange what I'm carving. There's nothing specifically um, about the background in this area that is specifically vitally important to the carving to be there. I mean the gibber in the middle, that's kind of important. <laughs> uh, this little bit of fancy framing, nah. In fact I could probably even do away with it altogether. But I will put something in, in this area just to uh, add a little bit of interest to that part of the, the carving. Now then, all I'm going to do is, I haven't decided whether to flat carve the background or to do this rough carve. Now, this, I'm pointing at things that you probably can't tell because of the lighting. So let's see if I can give some sort of indication. Alright, come on there. Now, Let's shade it a little bit. Now if you can see it's kind of rough carved. Uh, there you can see all sorts of furrows like a ploughed field perhaps. Um, this a bit here has been smooth carved. I've done it with a flat chisel. And I'm not quite sure which I like. They both want to be the same. Um, I, I was, I'm half minded on this to rough carve round there. Um, and a tiny bit down this edge which may vanish, I may not do um, because the, the gibber here is in kind of what looks like a dilapidated um, ruin and the shapes around it are kind of soft and um, as though they're worn with age perhaps so I'm kind of thinking that the background rough carved looks more appropriate to the rest of the image than a smooth carved one. I mean the jewel, if I leave it in, will be smooth and the surface of the, the banner will be smooth but um, the rest has this kind of worn look in the in the images so uh, I think I may, I, may, I may rough carve it. So I've left myself a little bit of spare space though um, you wouldn't actually know if I didn't so right well we're uh, at ten past nine now and unfortunately it's uh, it's time to stop uh, I've got now about another 10 or 15 minutes of clearing up because there's all of this um, pet bedding <laughs> now uh, all over the desk well over this bit of the desk and on the, the um, tarpaulin I've got on the floor. I did think ahead because the tarpaulin on the floor makes cleaning it up a bit easier because uh, in theory I could pick the tarpaulin up and tip it into a bin but I'm not going out in the pouring rain so I'm going to get the vacuum out and I'm going to vacuum that up at least it's not gone onto the carpet which would be a real pain to get rid of. Yeah sorry Lord Ali. Um, it's I start now starting around about seven if I can. Um, I can. It means I can like go over a little bit now. And I've got a bit of time because I I come home from work, I make an evening meal, and I start streaming with you know virtually no uh, one straight after the other. So by um, by stopping around about sort of now, it gives me about half an hour to an hour before I go to bed in order to sort of get other bits and pieces done that needs to you know paperwork or whatever that needs to be done uh, and it's a lot less um, fan, uh, frantic if you like than when I used to stream until 10 o'clock when I then you know have to really make a hurry to tidy all this stuff up to get to bed uh, and I'd have to be sort of rushing um, 
when I came home from work or after the evening meal in about sort of half an hour to get that paperwork sort of done. So it uh, it it um, makes for more a uh, slightly more relaxing stream for me. Yeah, it is such a hurry. Yeah. Yeah, and I have time to sort of hmm, calm. I won't say calm down. That doesn't. That's not quite what I mean. But you know, I've just spent two hours talking. I can get a cup of tea and have a drink, you know, or a cup of coffee, have a drink, and sort of sit back. Maybe even talk to Lady Zara, um, who's probably not seen me for the past four hours. Who else? Apart from while we ate the meal. Um. So I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to, before I go, I'm going to uh, just mention a couple of things. You've seen at the bottom of the screen all the time, zaragonart.com, that's my website. It's a work in progress, but it does have a little bit of information about some of the art forms that are there. And also, um, the, the carving art, at the moment there's only jewellery there. I'm about to try in about the next week or so to put it, put it into the shop which is on um, zarganart.etsy.com some of the pyrography that I've been doing uh, but uh, what's there at the moment is ch some chainmail jewellery, bead jewellery I think some bead jewellery there um, but mainly the chainmail chain jewellery which is also stuff that's done on the stream if anybody's interested, check it out I think there's some beautiful pieces and it's Valentine's Day soon um, and they're all specially made and the other thing I want to point out is at the top of the screen there's the three buttons that are up there now. Used to be only one, there's now three. Uh, the one that's always been there of course is the follow button. If you're not following the channel, if you'd like to, that would be absolutely fantastic. Helps the channel out and also lets you know, providing you let Twitch tell you, um, when I go live again, which hopefully will be tomorrow night, from about 7pm UK time. That's on GMT. It may vary a little bit because, as I mentioned, I get home from work, make tea, eat it, and then start streaming. Uh, and sometimes one's a little bit late and there's a knock on effect, but I will start streaming as much as possible. Or if um, I can't stream uh, or I'm going to be really late, I will usually mention that on Twitter. I mean, that's how I can at twitter.com slash how I can at. The other two buttons up there, of course, are more direct support to the stream. There's the bits uh, for sort of an odd contribution. Or there's the subscription button. Anybody that's watching would care to consider subscribing. That would be absolutely fantastic. You don't have to, of course. It's not required. And you are welcome here, whether you do or not. Um, but proceeds for those uh, sorts of things are what buys wood, chisels, and anything else that's needed that we use for streaming. So, having now mentioned my advert, uh, we'll hand you over to the Twitch one. And uh, I'm going to say good night. Thank you all. Well, Lally, again, thank you. And um, uh, Wolfie, I'm sure, is gone. Lizard, Soul, if you're still here, 87, thank you. Hope I will see you on the next stream and anybody else that's watching, you too as well. Bye for now.